afternoon, Bucks. I'm Ruel. And I'm Sam, and you're watching Riptide. Cheering for the state championship game was a blast. It sure was. I had fun cheering for our first time state champions. The biggest game in South Dade history. The Buccaneers were playing in their first ever state championship. It was time to prove all the hype, all the hard work, and their worth. One, two, three. After forcing a punt on the first Apopka drive, Khalil Render connected on a quick hit to CJ Warren, and he did the rest. After forcing a fumble on defense, Khalil Render was able to surprise the defense with this 60-yard run down the sideline. This set up a 23-yard touchdown pass to Tyree Green. Apopka took the momentum back early in the second quarter after two quick touchdowns. South Day responded after Tarvian Williams broke a tackle and took the ball for 71 yards for the touchdown. This play features some great lead blocking from C.J. Warren. At the half, South Aid was up 20-14. After receiving the ball to start the second half, the Bucks scored on a 49-yard touchdown pass to a wide-open C.J. Warren to extend their lead 27-14. Touchdown, South Popka responded by J.G. Simmons cutting the lead to six with this one-yard run. South Dade once again responded with a beautiful 10-yard fade to C.J. Warren with his third touchdown of the game. Popka wouldn't go away with J.J. Simmons scoring his third touchdown, cutting the deficit back to six. With a little over 10 minutes left in the game, South Dade started a methodical march down the field that brought the ball to Apopka's 10-yard line. But with two and a half minutes left to a championship, Khalil Render made his first and potentially costliest mistake as his pass was picked off at the goal line and Apopka took the ball to the 15-yard line but a legal block pinned the Blue Darters 97 yards away from a victory. South Dade's relentless blitz. And a costly drop left Apaka with a 4th and 21 on their own 3-yard line. The Blue Darters attempted the hook and ladder play, but it resulted in a fumble that was picked up by Tyree Brady and sealed South Dade's first ever championship. When the clock finally hit triple zeros, the celebration was on. This year was the year. We stuck it out. We're legends now. We're the first team to ever make it this far. First team to ever win. So, just it's a great, it's a great feeling to finally be the first. It's feel great. First time in school history. It's feel great. You know, I give it up for this community, for the school. This is what we wanted to represent the program. These are the kind of things that we talked about, and these boys went out there and they executed. 
This ring just means that anything is possible. You keep your faith in God, you know, because just to think about what I've been through for my high school career, not playing a year, you know, um, moving to Texas, and now I'm back here, and I won the state championship for my last game. I can't, can't even Number draw nine, that up. Jacob just Whitlock. God playing. God. It's incredible, man. I mean, it's hard to take it all in right now. I mean, just right before the game, Everybody was in the locker room crying since this is our last time playing with each other. Now we're here. And, you know, I just, it's hard to, it's hard to believe. Man, it feels great. It's, I can't even describe it in words. I mean, if you look at the stands, I mean, we've got so many people here supporting South Dade, and it means so much to these kids. And I know these kids mean a lot to these people. If you look, obviously, in the stands, like I said. You just won a state title. What are you going to do next? I think I'm going to Disney World. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Number 16, James Wiggins. Buckle up and drive home safely. This is the first time I've heard John Debrino. We have a good night. I'm very happy to have you here. The final score, South Bay, fourth Tonight, history was made. South Day won their first ever football state championship. It's a great night. Wonderful fans made the trip, and the boys are ready and excited. For Riptide, I'm Luis Gonzalez. Santa Claus himself came and visited our little bucks. He looks really familiar, doesn't he? Let's watch and see if we can figure him out. On Wednesday, the Treasure Cove was converted into a winter wonderland for our little bucks preschool. Since they were all on the good list, they had a visit from a very special someone. Our little bucks were great, and I have all their lists that they've made, and they've all been nice, so they will get everything they ask for. A Mickey Mouse drum set. A princess. A guy's two bike. She had the one friend. It went and one. It went Tinkerbell. A uh, four feet one arrow and a fast car and a slow one. Pajama and cool one. Defiant also stopped by to spread some holiday cheer and give some gifts. Before going back to the North Pole, Santa had a message for all of South Dade. Merry Christmas. Be good. Put your cookies out because I get hungry on Christmas Eve and go Bucks. It was a special time with our little Bucks. They ate pizza, decorated cookies, and got to tell Santa what they wanted for Christmas. For Riptide, I'm Brittany Hoskins. Merry Christmas! <laughs> For our patriotic Marines, Dr. Cespedes thought of the idea to send them holiday cards. South Dade students personally made over 3,000 cards. What a nice surprise for our Marines. Being away from your family during the holidays is hard. To help ease this pain, Dr. Cespedes collected Christmas cards to send to the Marines overseas. Having had a family in the service and knowing how, how it is when you're far away and, and you're lonely and you're in a, you're in a faraway land on, in harm's way, I appeal to the Buccaneer family to uh, get together and, and let's send, I said, uh, let's send at least a thousand Christmas cards or holiday cards to our troops in Afghanistan. Uh, there's nothing lonelier than being far away from family and friends and loved ones uh, and, and also being possibly in, in harm's way. So the Buccaneer family really came through on this one. I expect a thousand cards uh, in, with the same spirit that took us uh, um, and made us national champions in, in the football uh, arena. We have about a 3,000 cards or more. I frankly lost count. We have so many cards. And I'm really, really proud of the Bucks and all the people that helped. God bless you for it. You did a tremendous job. The significance of these cards were not lost in the visiting Marines. I've been deployed in, in combat theater during Christmases, and um, it means a lot. Uh, and and uh, my, my church sent us a bunch of cards. Uh, my mom kind of spearheaded that. And... Uh, 
I didn't know how it would be received by my Marines. You know, he's a bunch of tough guys, you know what I mean? You know, we're just, uh, we're living in the dirt and, and away from our homes and uh, we're operating every single day. Um, but I, so I just started passing them out. You know, I had some Marines help me out and I had guys coming back asking for more, you know? And it, it, it's, it, was, it was an extremely emotional thing for me to see these, these young, tough, you know, uh, Marines asking for, uh, can I get another card from that, that, that young person that, that wrote to me? It means the world, and I can't even tell you. Um, it's hard. It's hard to really describe. It turned out to be a very successful event, and Dr. Cespedes hopes to make this a yearly tradition. For Riptide, I'm Tiffany Walker. Did you guys hear about the surprise Ms. Gomez had for her daughter? I did. With the help of the woodshop students, she restored a wooden horse. Let's go to Priscilla for the story. The holidays are a time to celebrate with their families and to look back at fond memories. For Ms. Gomez, one of her favorite memories is of the rocking horse she gave her daughter when she was little. After 27 years of use, the small wooden horse had seen better days. Now, thanks to the woodshop students, the old horse has gotten a new life. Look at that! It's so beautiful! Wow! What a great job! You did a magnificent job! It looks brand new! Guys, this is 26 and a half years old. Senior Giovanni Hilario explained the process of the restoration. The first thing I had to do was to sand the whole thing down, and then um, we ha I had to I had to restain the whole thing, and then finish it with the with the gloss. We had a I had to take off the the ears, all of this. The hair was falling apart too, so we had to do that. We had to take it all apart. This horse has very special meaning. It was my first vacation away from my baby girl. And I went to Colorado. And I saw it in an antique shop. I went ahead and purchased it. But that was when she was about a year old. She's 26 and a half now. So it's very old. It's an antique itself. So it has a lot of significance. It was hers when she was little. And now we get to pass it on to my grandchild if I ever get one. Thanks to the students' restoration, the little rocking horse will live on for many more generations. For Riptide, I'm Priscilla Perales. I never thought I'd see South Days alumni roaming the hallways once again. They were reunited with our school to share their college experiences for the College Forum yesterday. Let's go to Jackie for some more info. Ms. Gilman hosted her annual College Forum with South Day graduates attending universities all across the country. It was a great opportunity for students of all grade levels to learn about college and ways to prepare. We just finished up the 2013 College Forum, which was the biggest and best ever. I don't have a final count, but I had confirmed over 50 alumni. Those are South Dade graduates from the class of 2011 and beyond. Most of them did graduate last year. Um, came back to share with our students now what college really is. They talked about things like financial aid, and scholarships, roommates. They talked about what real class schedules are. We had athletes talk about their realities of studying and making time for practice and their sport. And in the audience, we had freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors who just finished doing their financial aid workshops. So it was the best one I've had yet. I had the most alumni, and I had over 15 classes fill up the auditorium, and I couldn't be happier with it. I want to give the students that uh, I was in their shoes at one point in time, I want to give them the chance to see what I saw, to experience what I experienced, and mainly to just uh, get the gist of what college is about. Um, personally, I think my man is a great choice to go to college just because you don't think it's important. You don't think, hey, I go to Miami Dade. People who go to Miami Dade don't go away, don't go do stuff, don't, they don't leave, they don't make friends, they don't, it's not important. But it's such a great start. I think she it. So I came to the college forum only because I want to share my experience with everybody else. I know it was extremely valuable when we had it. Did we have it? Yes, we had it. And like just getting that perspective of a student who's already been in college and knows it, helps her for you for whatever questions you might have. It's better to ask a peer than to ask somebody who might necessarily be an adult and like had went to college 10 years ago and might be very different. But uh, yeah, that's definitely why I came back and why I think it's valuable. The 2013 College Forum was a great success and possibly the best one yet. For Riptide, I'm Jackie. 
I'm so glad it's finally the holiday season. Me too. It's my favorite time of the year. Let's go to some five-second Christmas shorts. Hey, man, are you in? Yeah, they don't suspect a thing. I got you some Germex. Oh. That's a gift that keeps on giving. Yeah. If you want to be with me. Hey, your birthday's next week. I'm not going to see you. Happy birthday, Jesus. First off, I'm not dead, Jesus, and my name is Jose. That's all for today, Bucks. I'm Ruel. And I'm Sam. Have a wonderful winter break.